let me congratulate the Asin of MP. Uh, I noticed uh, today that he swore an oath of allegiance <laughs> and um, not to relitigate really uh, the Supreme Court issue, but I want the nation to be clear that the oath he swore today had nothing to do with citizenship. It's a job-related oath of allegiance, and that's what Article 94.2a is all about. When you swear that oath of allegiance, it is serious business, because unlike citizenship-related allegiance, uh, this type of oath is juridical in the sense that if you violate the oath, you will be removed from office. But even when you are removed from office, you continue to be a citizen because, as I've insisted, allegiance and citizenship are never the same thing. Citizens owe allegiance, but it doesn't mean any time you see allegiance, then citizenship is implicated. In constitutional law, Allegiance to a country other than the country in question is a term of art that basically refers to occupations. So we start with a problem at the Supreme Court, but let's move away from that and get to the criminal assize. What is at stake in the criminal assize? We are told by the government that when Jechi Kwesin answered the question, do you owe allegiance to a country other than Ghana? When he answered no, he knew that he was providing a misleading response. Jechi Kwesin, on the other hand, responds and say, no, I answered that truthfully because to me, the question meant have I renounced my citizenship of, uh, of Canada? Have I applied to renounce my citizenship of Canada? The government says, no, that's not what the question means. That question means, are you a citizen of a country other than Ghana? And the Supreme Court steps in and says, guys, stop playing. This question of do you owe allegiance to a country other than Ghana is inherently ambiguous. It's vague. And so we are going to step in and tell the nation what that phrase means. Now, let's think about that. Because there are certain consequences that flow from that. Evans, if a question is ambiguous, as the Supreme Court has stated, then an answer to that ambiguous question can never be perjurious. You cannot perjure yourself when you've answered a question that is ambiguous. Because what the court is saying is the government understood the phrase Different. differently from the person who was responding. So then, what is the basis for continuing with the criminal prosecution? The Supreme Court, one of the implied consequential action of assuming jurisdiction was that the perjury case should be discontinued because we did not know the meaning of owing allegiance to a country other than Ghana until Justice, um, um, where, uh, what's, what's the name of the justice who, uh, who, who, who wrote the opinion? Uh, uh. In, in the Supreme Court yes, case, yes. I mean, I mean it doesn't come here. But right. until he wrote that, Amegache, I'm sorry, yes. Justice Amegache, Amegache, until Justice Amegache, Amegache, wrote Amegache, wrote that, Amegache. Uh, until Justice Amegache told us what allegiance to a country other than Ghana meant, we did not know what it means. And if we did not know what it means, then as a matter of law, as a matter of law, a perjury claim fails, and the whole staff should be discontinued either by the Attorney General or even the court itself. I mean, Roxane, on that point, though, isn't that why the flip side to that is, isn't that why you actually then need an under court of competence restriction, if indeed the two sides disagree, to then pronounce on this fin finally? And that's why the Attorney General is in court and is saying, I want to see this through. No, because what Prof is saying is that when you 
when you proceed to prosecute a citizen, you are bringing the entire powers of state of the republic against the person on founded grounds. Founded grounds means on a properly investigated matter for which a prima facie determination has been made. Because you don't go to court. This, this is a matter on indictment. This is a matter that's before the high court. So indictment, indictment has, been, has been done. So to indict a person, you are saying that a prima facie determination has been made. So Prof is saying, the standard in criminal prosecution is much, much higher. But it took the Supreme Court in the civil action to explain the nuances of the matter. So the state has, the Republic had a different understanding represented by the Attorney General. The accused person has a different understanding represented by himself and his lawyers. So where there's, there's a divergence in terms of understanding of the provision, we all go to the Supreme Court. The yeah. Supreme Court says, citizenship is co-terminals to allegiance. All right? So at the time, so what Prof is saying, which I am in concurrence of is that, at the, at the time, time he was filling the form, it was yes, ambiguous. He, was, he had no malafide, he had no malice of all thought. Mm. He says that when you ask the question and he answers no, he did so with, with the intent that he, had, he owed no allegiance to neither Canada or to any other country. Now, the standard of proof in the criminal matter is much, much higher in the civil matter. So... That's why I'm so worried that even with the civil, with the, with the decision of the court in the civil matter, I am surprised that the Attorney General hasn't gone back to court to amend, to vary, to withdraw his charges, and to perhaps proceed on a charge that he thinks he can succeed. But he's still proceeding in such a manner that he thinks that even the charge of perjury can be made up. Except that that is not the only charge he's pursuing. There are, yes, there are exactly, four other charges. Ex exactly my point. That's yes. what I'm saying that when, as a lawyer, you come to this denouement, unraveling of the matters, prosecution always will come back to court and say that with hindsight, we want to withdraw the original charge, amend it, reduce the number of charges to say one or two, and, and refer. So it's your view that at least the perjury should go. That's your view. That's my view. Yeah, but then the others, the others, then the others space, if, tackle if, even if you your, your view. Matter. So we are taking the matters methodically. So as we speak, the, the charge in respect of perjury will fall flat. Yeah, but you don't know that because that is, that, that is the whole essence we, 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 of this particular we, matter. We, yes, we, the we, are, we are discussing... I, I, I get that. But for the Attorney General, he, yes. he disagrees with that view. Right? And, and that so, is and so right. why don't you it then... It is his right to do so. And that comes back to the question. But we are, dealing with allow... the, we are dealing with the facts vis-a-vis -vis the evidence. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we are, we, are, we are two lawyers here. It's no longer yeah. a matter of opinion. Yes. It's a matter of law and no fact and evidence. For sure that the Supreme Court has said the phrase is ambiguous. If a phrase is ambiguous. There is doubt. It triggers an ambiguous question. The answer to an ambiguous question can never be the basis for a perjury prosecution because the question is understood differently by different people. The attorney general thinks he was asking or the government thinks he was asking, are you a citizen of a country other than Ghana? The person say, uh, no. no. Because he was answering a different question. So he hasn't perjured himself because he's not knowingly providing a misleading answer to the question that you the think you are question. asking. He is ans uh, answering a different question because of his understanding of the phrase. And so the, this thing falls completely. I mean, it, 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 I'm surprised that. But, but then they are for.